Hey there, welcome back to Crossfader. My name is Jamie Hartley and I'm here today to show you how to get set up in a club if you're a record box DJ. So, first and foremost, if you're using a controller at home and you know, you've know you got confident on it and then suddenly you've got find yourself getting your first DJ gig or some of your first DJ gigs in clubs and the clubs have a mixer and two CDJs. That's a pretty standard setup in most clubs. Now, the first option is for you to take your controller along and you could plug your controller into one of the channels on the mixer um, and just play on your controller at the side. That is an option. But if you want to start using the CDJs still with your laptop plugged in, then this video is going to show you how to do just that. If you are interested in how to plug a controller into a club mixer, we have a separate video for that that you can check out. But let's now have a closer look at how to get your laptop with record box running plugged into CDJs and basically use the CDJs like a controller. Let's get stuck in. So when playing in a club, you'll rock up to the club and you'll be presented with some equipment that looks something similar to this right here. So we've got the DJ, DJM 900 Nexus 2 and the CDJ 2000 Nexus 2 players here. Now, pretty much nine times out of 10, this is how it will be set up. So let's have a look across the back. What we have is we have some RCA cables going from one CDJ into the mixer. So that's sending an internal source into the mixer. If you just have a look, there are two options for each channel. We've got line and phono. So there's a line source and a phono source. Line is for CDJs. You could plug your controller straight into a line source from its master out and just play on a controller this way. But if you're wanting to set up in this mode by using the CDJs, then basically you will want to make sure that this cable is plugged into the line and into there as well. If you're using turntables, it would go into the phono source. Now I've got this set up in channels two and three. This is a four channel mixer. You will probably nine times out of 10 only have two CDJs or only be using two CDJs, especially those first times rocking up to a club. So it's up to you how you want it set up, but having two and three means it's all very central to the crossfader and central to the mixer. So that works well and that's how we're going to keep it. If you want to change them around, feel free to do so but some of the settings later on in this tutorial, you just need to be aware of which thing you're selecting. Now, the other things on the back of the mixer to be aware of is this is the master out. So these are the cables going to the main speakers. They're gonna be going to the club speakers. They should already be plugged in and you shouldn't have to touch them. And please don't unplug them because it could damage the sound system. There may also be just under here, if I just take these out, a booth. Out. And this I talk about later in the tutorial, but this booth out, leave them, they'll probably be plugged in. I don't have booth monitors in the studio, but they might have some jacks plugged in there. And that's something so you can hear the music nice and loud in the DJ booth. So that's something that's missing here, but might be plugged in when you arrive to a club. Other than that, there probably won't be much else plugged into the back of a mixer um, or anything else that you really need to worry about right now. The only other way to be aware of being set up with the CDJs is using the digital source. So what you might find is you might find just one cable in digital here, and that one cable will go to the digital here. So we've got channel two, and that might be the way the CDJs are set up. And that's fine. Just again, if they're set up that way, later in the tutorial, you will need to make sure that you've got a digital source selected on the top of the mixer rather than line. I know it all sounds quite technical, but don't worry. It is pretty self-explanatory once you get going. Now then, how to get your laptop plugged in. So I have two USB cables here. These are the same USB cables you will use for something like your controller. Um, they just plug in one into the back of here and one into the back of here. Let me just look over the back. And now we have the CDJs connected directly and plugged in to the laptop. So that's what you're going to want to do. Just one in each CDJ directly into the laptop. If you use multiple things in your laptop, you might need to invest in a USB hub so that you can plug multiple things into your laptop and still have, say, hard drives and whatever else plugged in. Now, just make sure that the top of each channel, if we're plugged into channels two and three, they match. So we had it plugged into line, remember? So make sure that this selector is also online. If you had it plugged into digital, then switch it to digital and so on. 
Once you have all of your cables plugged in and you're happy that you have the right um, input and output selected and you've got the USB cables plugged into the CDJs and into your laptop, open up the Recordbox DJ software and you should be presented with the same screen as normal in Recordbox performance mode. So it should look very similar to if you were plugged into um, a controller. Now, there is something very important we need to do before we even try to play anything. At the moment, these two CDJs are acting as independent controllers and they will control the left or the right deck, but because there is nothing from the laptop plugged into the mixer, it doesn't know to say, okay, the music being played on this CDJ, send it to this channel, for example, and output there and vice versa on the opposite side. So we have to do that in the laptop. Otherwise, the music is just going to come out of our laptop speakers. If we go into the gear icon in record box, you'll see under the audio tab and under the audio section, if we drop down, you can choose your laptop speakers or you can choose each of the individual CDJs. But what we need to do is combine these CDJs as one audio output. And this is especially important if you're a Mac user. Windows users, you should be able to control the audio output of each CDJ uh, independently. But on a Mac, we need to create something called an aggregate device. Now Pioneer do provide a download for you to do this automatically with one click. If you type into Google CDJ aggregator device, you can then download it from one of their product pages, such as the CDJ 2000 Nexus 2 product page, there will be a link to it. And then it looks something like this. Click it, and it brings up this CDJ slash XDJ aggregator. Ag aggregator. Both CDJs are showing up there, that's great, and all we do is press this OK button. And what this does is it creates a combined aggregate device. Now, if you don't, you can't find that. If you're on a Mac, you can press, I'm just pressing command and space bar to bring up the spotlight search and then type in audio MIDI setup. Now you'll see that there is a Pioneer CDJ XDJ aggregate device, but that's just been created because of that tool that we just ran. If you can't find it for any reason, just click this plus icon, create aggregate device, and then just tick to use both CDJs and just turn off that drift correction there. So that now, if you look on both, is exactly the same. So it's working exactly the same if you're struggling to find that script to run. Okay, I'm just going to delete that one and keep our Pioneer CDJ XDJ aggregate device. Now in Recordbox preferences, you'll notice if I just go off it and back on it, it might just have to refresh you'll notice Pioneer CDJ XDJ as one of the audio drivers. Click that, let it load in, and then that is how we need to have the CDJ set up. Once you have selected the new audio driver, there's one thing you need to do on the CDJs to link them to the software. On the CDJs, you need to click this link button on both there and there, and you'll be presented with a screen. On this screen, it says USB MIDI and then push to connect. I'm going to do it on this side first because that CDJ is a little bit hidden by my laptop. So all we do is push this rotatory knob down and then it comes up saying choose record box DJ deck. So then scroll left and right to find, this is obviously deck number two, to find deck number two. So we scroll, you'll see it comes up deck number one, question mark, nope, deck number two. That's what we want and then click it down again. That's now connected. Repeat on the same on the other side and do the same thing. Let's scroll to deck number one and click it down. Now we can see our collection and playlists all on the CDJ themselves. Now just something to be aware of is if you scroll on one CDJ using this knob here, up and down your library, it will also scroll on the opposite side because the two CDJs are basically linked together, but we can set now the output is being sent separately. So if I just load in this demo track two on this side, and then the first thing we want to do is test if it's coming out the right channel, because sometimes it automatically gets them the wrong way around. So if I press play, you'll notice it's coming out of this channel. You might be able to just hear that through my microphone, but that means the sound is coming out the right channel. Let's test the opposite side and load in demo track one on this side. And we've got the sound output coming here. And that's exactly what we want. If for any reason that basically you're playing this deck and it's coming out of the wrong channel, then go into your gear icon again in the settings. Just click that there. 
go down and you can change here on output channels under the audio settings you can change whether you want it to be the cdj slash xdj2 or one and you would have to just switch these over so as an example if these have automatically set this this way around then if i play this you'll see it's coming out of the wrong channel if i play this you'll see it's coming out of the opposite side so if you ever come across that, it's a quick troubleshoot is you'll just have to toggle them over. And it does it automatically when you change one, it then replaces the other. That's something I've found sometimes when I've setting up this way, it's just done it the wrong way around. So I wanted to make you aware of that. Now, that is pretty much it. As for the mixer, this is controlling just the audio. So for example, if you were to play a song, you can control the EQs as you would on your controller, the sound color effects, everything works as normal. The only thing that might be a bit different is the automatic BPM readout. Because there is no data being sent from the mixer to the laptop, then if you were to select an effect on this effects channel, so let's put it on channel three, because I'm plugged into channel three here, you'll notice that it's flashing 120 BPM. But if I move that, it doesn't do it exactly in time. I have to then play this audio source, and it eventually tries to read what the BPM is automatically. So there are a few seconds lag there between it automatically reading the BPM. But that's something I wanted to make you aware of when set up in this way. Other than that, the mixer is pretty much very similar to a lot of the controllers out there. So you've got your Q buttons, things are labeled the same, which is very handy and very helpful. The effects section might be a bit more intricate on a DJM mixer than maybe your controller, but all the parameters should work very much the same. You've got your headphone input here, headphone output here, sorry, and the level there. You can add the master cue on here and use this mixing to mix between the master in the headphones and the headphone cue. And then you've got all your crossfader assigns here, so you can have it on through so the crossfader doesn't work or switch them there. Your crossfader curve, if you're a scratch DJ, is set up here and yeah that's pretty much it the one other thing that you may not be using at home that you will find in a club is the booth monitor this is very important a lot of the time in clubs because if the speakers are set up facing out to the audience and you're in a dj booth you may be hearing a delayed version of the music because it might be bouncing off the back wall and then coming to the booth and there's a split second delay it might sound very strange in that environment if the booth monitor is available, turn that up until it's nice and loud. And these are speakers facing towards you in the DJ booth. Turn that up so it's nice and loud so you can hear a direct source of the music. This, you can turn it up and down as much as you need and it's not going to affect what the audience hear, especially in proper clubs, you know, big clubs. In bars, it might sort of filter into what the audience can hear a little bit. So just be careful slamming it up and down. Um, obviously don't damage your ears and have it riding right the way up here and just blasting away and damaging your ears so that's something again to be aware of is the booth monitor the master level up here is the main audio level coming out of the speakers in the club or the bar um, usually that will be set maybe by a sound tech if it's not then obviously start working that up throughout the night you probably don't want to go any higher than this position here. You can see there's a gray bar and that's sort of your danger zone. You might find that if you go beyond there, it starts to clip and hits the reds quite strongly. There are clip warning lights on these channels as well. So if these start flashing at you, then please turn the levels down slightly, whether it be on a channel or on the master level. As for the CDJs, now, you've got access to a lot of the performance features, the main ones that you're going to need as a DJ, but you don't have access to everything within Rekordbox. So if you're a DJ that uses your controller and likes to slam away on keyboard mode or use things like rolls, then it's a bit trickier to use those features on a CDJ. What you do have access to are your hot cues. Now I don't have any set on this demo track, but you can set them just by tapping them here. These work exactly the same way they would be set up in your software. You can set loops using the in and the out, or the four beats. And there we go, and you can save that loop if you wanted and exit the loop and then recall it. There is slip mode on CDJs. You can do a slip reverse. 
and you do actually have two banks of hot cues as well to be aware of so if you do have eight hot cues set up but you only see four jump onto the next bank and then you'll see the extra ones there you can half and two times your loop using these buttons here you can save memory points and recall memory points so if you have a memory point stored you can use these when a loop's not active to toggle through different memory points vinyl speed adjust this changes the stop time so when you pause the track this changes how long it pauses for and the release time i'd probably set it around this position here jog mode this light doesn't work on this cdj but it will either be vinyl mode or cdj mode vinyl mode for scratch djs or if you want to use the top of the jog wheel to scroll through cdj mode if you want it to just nudge on the top as well just be aware if you have it in cdj mode um, you can't then scratch so just be aware of that mode to toggle it between there just below we have the tempo width so we can go from plus to minus six percent to ten percent sixteen to wide six ten and so on there's also master tempo for locking the key of the song and your tempo are just there if you want to go back and browse through your library hit the browse button here and then you can scroll through your songs to load a new one in by clicking down if you then need to transition back to a USB DJ or someone playing off CDs, for example, then you would just click, plug the USB in on the deck that's not playing, click USB and just load a track and then off you go and just play that song. It might come up with a warning saying, are you sure you want to um, disconnect from the laptop, from record box and just press OK and then you can just play a song. This track will continue playing as normal. Another way to set up the audio if you didn't want to use the CDJ aggregator and wanted to use the internal audio driver of the mixer, then you could plug a third USB cable into one of these USB slots here. You may have to install a driver when you plug it in for the first time, so just be aware of that. And then once you've plugged it in, obviously it's popped up already on my record box that it's been detected. Do you want to change the audio device? If I press yes, now that it's connected, it gets a little bit more complex. So if we go into the gear icon here, we then need to go in the audio tab, change some of these settings potentially. So at the moment, input deck one, two, three, and four on the input channels, it says control tone phono. Now, if I do the drop downs, a few different options here. What we're going to need to do is go into the mixers setting utility because we need to basically match and say that this CDJ is plugged in via the line and this CDJ is plugged in via the line source. But if we can't select the line source for say deck two on, on here, then it's not going to work. So if we go to setting utility, just click it there, you'll be, you'll find this sort of box. Now there's a few different tabs, mixer input, you can't change anything right here, but mixer output, you've got all these different drop downs. Now, if you hover over, you'll see a little blue marker appear on the display as to what whereabouts this selector is. So obviously here we are, USB 3, 4, this channel 2, channel 2, we need to make sure that it's set online. So that one's correct, it's set online. But if, for example, your CDJs were plugged in via digital source, then you'd want it on digital. Um, if you had turntables, you may want to have this on phono. So you've got to make sure that this is set up correct. And then on the top, it says when control tone is selected, select USB A. So that's talking about a DVS setup. Either way, we still need to switch it to say that we're plugged in to the USB A on the selector. Switch it across, that disappears. Let's do the same again, setting utility because it automatically thought we were finished on the next channel, channel three, line. Switch it across to A. There we are. Now, when I go off, the preferences and off this you'll notice that both CDJs are now active again and we can play the music through there. The one benefit of the literally the pretty much only one benefit of plugging in via USB here I would say is that the effects channel now maps out exactly so it should change in time the BPM changes in time with the tempo just over here. And that's pretty much the only benefit you'll have from plugging in. Um, obviously you are then using the internal audio 
sound card as well which if it's a really good quality one then maybe that's a bit better but there's not much to it and there we have it that's how you get it set up in what you call hid mode so you can use your laptop as you've been using with the controller but with cdjs now like i mentioned there are a few limitations you can't use all of the performance features or at least you can't access them directly on the cdjs However, it's a great way to get set up and a great way to take what you do at home and plug easily into a club setup, ready to go and play to a crowd. Now there is one other way is by directly using a USB straight into the CDJs themselves. Now to do that, you will need to go onto the export mode of Rekordbox. All of your hot cues will still be there. All of your loops that are saved will still be there. Your memory points will still all be saved in the export mode. You just need to toggle to that mode and then export to a USB and plug straight in. If you want a tutorial on how to export properly to USB, then just click the link for a video on exactly how to do that so you can get your USB stick prepared properly, ready to just plug straight in to the CDJs. Thanks again for watching. Please remember to like, comment, share, subscribe, do all of that good stuff to help us keep making more videos like this. Thanks and good luck with those first sets in the club. I'll see you again soon.